Greetings, you lovely people. Today I will be showing you some levels that I made when I was a wee nipper using Duke Nukem 3D and the build editor. And uh, Duke Nukem being one of the first build engine games. There were a few back then. There was Blood as well and Shadow Warrior. Power Slave as well. It also went by the name of Exhumed. That's a great game. Uh, they're all really good games, and if you've not played those games, then you've got to play those games. Because there's a world of awesome first-person shooter games that you are yet to experience. So play them, because they're great. So yep, yeah, this was uh, a level that I made. These are all levels that I made. And it's been years, actually. It's been years since I've done this. And the secret there. But uh, I'm not going to do the secrets, actually, first. I'm just going to go through the level, how the level was meant to be done. We pick up that gun on our way past. Die. Come on, come on. Come around the corner. Hello. 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 So this was a basic kind of go left, press a switch, go right, and you're done. It was a very short level. A very short level indeed. But, um, so there's the exit right there. You come through this glass tube. But there are loads of secrets on this level. There's, there's probably more secret area in this level than there is actually level itself, if that makes sense. So there's that button there, that's one of the secrets, and that opened up this little area here. Uh, not much going on here. I pick up a pipe bomb, I press that button. What did that do? Um, oh, it opened up the other one. Um... So there's now two holes in that wall. Um, there, there is a point to that, actually. The reason behind that is that there is another way of getting into that room. And here there's, like, evidence that there are areas that you can go to. Um, and, like, like, this little building in the corner here. Um, but I, I liked that idea for, for a first level, for the level itself to be very short and sweet and simple. But uh, it kind of leaves you with a feeling of curiosity after you've completed it. You just think, well, there was that whole building that I never even went in. That's weird, isn't it? So let's get some stuff. There's a switch here, which opens up that door just long enough for you not to make it. Uh, which could be very frustrating indeed if you persisted in trying to get through that door. Um, but it don't work. It's not open long enough. You can't do it. Well, maybe you can. I've not really tried it too many times. You'd have to be bloody good to get through that in time, though. Um, so that switch there, uh, as you can see, there's some little textures that don't match there. Bricks that aren't aligned, which is a clue. And now they do align. So here's the alternative way into this secret area. And now we can see this tunnel's no longer blocked off, and there's this weird little volcano thing. With a teleporter in the top. Some weird shit going on over here. Come get some. I remember I used to enjoy making secret areas because you could just go wild and you could just make something really peculiar uh, with no explanation or anything, you know? And I like making peculiar things, as you probably already know about me. Alright, so let's just trot on through this level then. Here we are, and then there's the exit there. Boom! Right then, moving swiftly onward to level two. I cut out all the loading and, you know, the completion screens and stuff. Who wants to see that? So, here is level two. It can only really be described as level two. Um, it isn't really anything in particular. It's just a building, really. Um, but back then, you know, I, I used to play a lot of Doom, as you may know. And Duke Nukem had a little bit of a different vibe to it. The buildings themselves had a kind of narrative to them, like there was a cinema in the first level and, you know, there were cafes and dumpsters and, you know, real world, real life objects. That was kind of part of Duke Nukem as a thing. Um, but these levels were more like the old Doom levels where, in the way that they are just interesting looking spaces and structures that are really there to serve the purpose of containing enemies and items. So now we're outdoors. Outdoorsy land. Hey, that shotgun. Game, baby. 
Now you used to spend a lot of time on little details, like it's that archway there, you know, just trying to make it nice and round and make the textures fit nicely and stuff. Um, but looking back at these levels, I, I perhaps um, over-prioritised on irrelevant things, really. I have Sauron on the left, for a laugh. And you might spot something funny going on in the bricks, in the, in the rocks. Well, you might not. Oh, hello. What are you doing down there? Oh, nearly slipped off. You can see there's an animated bit of texture there, and you can just walk right on through it. And it takes you to this funny secret tube thing. I don't really know what this is or what it means. I just put some shrunken weird textures at the ends there that mess with your head and uh, the eye, eye of Sauron at the end there. And we can just walk through this wet red tube like we're giving birth to ourselves or something, I don't know. It's all a bit weird really. I'm sure Sigmund Freud would have a field day trying to explain what that means. Um, and here's another little weird bit. Not so much a secret, more a, an irrelevant room. But I like making irrelevant rooms. There's no need to come here, really. It's just a, a kind of get out in case you fall into the slime. Into that slime river. Um, so I suppose it does give it something of a purpose. But I used to like the idea of just making rooms for the sake of it, because that's what reality is like, isn't it? You know, Not every room is there for your convenience. Like, not every room is part of a story. Some rooms are just there, aren't they? They're not there to aid you in completing your mission or achieving your final goal or destination. You know, in reality, rooms just exist, don't they? And you just happen to show up and be in those rooms. But when you're making a level, each and every room does have a purpose in a way. It is a contrite story to get your player from from A to B. Um, and it's very easy to fall into a kind of linear um, state of play, which I was kind of trying to avoid, really. Uh, squishy, squishy. Looks like kebab meat. And we've got a spinny platform here. Oh, it does cause the baddies to glitch out a little bit, but uh, I refuse to take responsibility for that. It's just the game's a bit glitchy, so what? You know, I'm not going to sacrifice my spinny thing just because the baddies glitch out and teleport in and out of existence around the spinny thing. It's not my fault that that happens, is it? Oh, there's another one. There he goes. Oh god, where are you? Let's get off this thing. And I apologise for my terrible gameplay as well. But I'm actually playing this out of a really small window because it's the only way that I can get fraps to record it. So my aim's a little bit off. <laughs> but never mind. It's not like I'm out to show you how much of a great Duke Nukem player I am or anything like that. I just want to show you my levels, really. Yeah, switch that switch. And uh, yeah, this I remember I was playing a lot of Rise of the Triad when uh, when I was making this bit. And I think it kind of rubbed off on that previous room there. Okay, so we now have access to this room here. And we can see outside and and I made this funny tree column weird thing here. But uh, a lot of the reason why I made levels in the first place was just so that I could make peculiar and interesting structures like that. I mean, part of me wanted to make a nice, fun game for myself. I mean, that has to be said also. But there was another part of me that just wanted to build stuff. And whether that stuff resembled anything in reality or not didn't really matter. Uh, in fact, I think that the things I most enjoyed building were, you know, totally new, foreign, weird, alien structures, stuff that didn't really make a lot of sense and didn't really have a lot of purpose. And um, these levels were, you know, often a, just a place that I could showcase such uh, weird oddities. Although having said that, this, this level's quite um, quite standard, explainable kind of level. There's nothing too peculiar going on here. So what have we got? We've got some bars there and a switch on the other side of the bars. 
Um, we've got this door here. Is there any? No, nothing. Behind that door and some bars that won't open there. So what we do is we go down this. This is a lift here. And we enter sewer type world. <laughs> got some nice angled boxes there. It was all about angling the boxes. That was quite a hard thing to do, to angle the boxes and match up the textures. Some cutting edge shit right there. <laughs> you know, in Doom we were used to all the boxes just lining up in nice, neat little right angles. Alright, so what's going on? I haven't got time for you. Anyone down there? There's a dude down there. And we could also angle the roofs as well and make these kind of tunnel roofs and ramped floors like this over here which was something new to this engine, to the to the build engine You certainly couldn't do that shit in Doom and It's funny to think that once upon a time this game was uh, you know, it was the epitome of of graphics, it was like a good example of a modern game when it came out and it was great as well, it was a nice upgrade on Doom I thought, I mean it, it didn't prove to be as fun as Doom in the long run, but hell it was a good game, especially with the level editor as well. A lot of people had a lot of fun making levels and playing levels on this game. So we're in my funny maze here. I used to like the idea that you could switch a switch and certain walls would would open up and, and certain other areas of space would close up and you could effectively... There you go, that's a dead end now. You could effectively kind of reconfigure a maze. So you could work your way into a maze and press a switch and then the maze would change around you and you've got a different maze to exit. I never really did enough of that, actually. I mean, there's a level design concept that I could put into something modern. I hate those two, I don't know why I put so many of them in my levels. They're horrible. Okay, so let's open up this, we pick up that red key, lovely. That's what we need to do, who was that anyway? And this was kind of like a big chimney, I don't know, I don't really know what the hell that is. Right, so yeah, we got a key. That's That just happened. Um, let's go back upstairs. You can actually go up that ramp there, but I'm not going to, because... I don't want to. I'm going to go the sensible way. I don't want to walk on slime. I'd rather walk on this nice red carpet here. Okay. So here we are, those bars open. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, everybody's seen me. They're all going to shoot me. Die. And you may be wondering, why didn't you just hop over? From the indoors to outdoors, why didn't you just hop over that little wall there? Well, you can't, because they're unpassable walls. Just so you know. Right, here we go, red key. Let's put that in. Oh, and it's on. It's on, the door's just open straight away. Nothing getting unlocked here. Oh god, no ammo. Oh, that was close. Oh god, die. I suppose no wonder I have no ammo, really, because I've been missing everybody. Because <laughs> my aim is so dodgy. No, 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 I've totally run out of everything. <laughs> I've got lots of, plenty of pistol, all right, and now I've got some explosives. So that's the start of the level there, that's the very beginning through that, that grating there. And there's also another window here that, that shows you a previous part of the level. I used to enjoy that. You know, you spend quite a while going through a level, getting to an area that is actually very close to the beginning of the level. And I used to like doing that quite a lot. You look for a window and you go, oh, there I am. Oh, I'm back there. Um, yeah, here's another example. Look, that's that irrelevant room I was talking about before. <laughs> where we saw those two octopus dudes. Alright, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Exit. Boom. Right then. Oh, I like this level. This one was called the lab. The laboratory. We've got some bulletproof glass and then we've got non-bulletproof glass. Going on. And here we've got a nice little intersection, a little root convergent point where we have a red door. 
on the left. And I believe we have the blue door on the other side as well, yeah. And we go straight ahead into the restricted area. I did quite a lot of work on the lighting here. Um, as you can see. And I got these weird shadow monsters that I made, which are basically I modified the palette of these guys so that they were all black, every pixel was black, and then I made them translucent. So here we go, there's a secret here. But the game tried to make out that the translucency that I put on these characters was kind of like an ability of theirs that went away when you killed them. So they just ended up looking like turds on the floor, really. Go, some weird stuff, a weird little secret area there, some turds. Let's blow that place up for a laugh. Blow you up. Oh, it's all very volatile around here. Random explosions going off all over the place. <laughs> Let's get inside. Okay. It all looks a bit disjointed, doesn't it? It looks a bit silly, to be honest, so. Let's get rid of that. Step over my shadow turds. Yeah, it's worth noting at this point that when you were making levels with the build editor, you had to do all the lighting manually, and, and by that I mean you'd have to draw lines on the floor and uh, actually kind of create a light area and a dark area and then match up the textures to give the illusion of, of lighting. It ain't like today where you can just build something and stick a light somewhere and the computer just sorts it all out for you. You have to do it all yourself. God. Oh. Yeah, sometimes just the simplest of enemies can give you a really hard time. Okay. So, here's our red key. That's what we came here for. And we're locked in. So we gotta find a way out. We come around the other side and we got some some more of those horrible nasties that I hate so much and seem to put everywhere. Come on, blow them up, blow them up. Come on, come on. Die. Oh god, he's not dying. Come on, hurry up and die. No, no, he's still not dying. Oh well, so we switch that switch. Um, better, better take this dude out. There we go, he's dead. And we come around here. Okay, so we're back at the... Oh, back at the intersection. And we can go through the red door now. Sweet. Here's the red area. They made like a glass floor here. Because the editor itself, the engine, the game engine itself, didn't allow level above level, but there were some sneaky ways which you could get round that. And that, that glass floor stroke ceiling is a good example of that. Now that door doesn't open. This was kind of based on the circle of destruction, which is a level of doom. Or is it called, I think it's called the Circle of Death. Yeah, that's it. Well, it was called the O of Destruction on the PlayStation, I think. That's why I got them confused. God, I'm a geek for knowing that, aren't I? But never mind. I just like Doom. Yeah. yeah, that's okay, isn't it? I'm allowed to like Doom, aren't I? <laughs> right. So this secret really was um, mostly just here to give you a, a nice vantage point. So you didn't have to bother... Uh, legging it round the circle of death like a ninny. You could just get the job done like a pro. Just blow it up, blow them up, blow up. Oh god. Devastate a weapon maybe? Let's just blow these dudes up. Yeah, there we are. There we go, press that button, let's pretend those textures lined up perfectly <laughs> um, yeah and there too yeah but, okay so here we are happily in the red zone having put the red key in and these I put on the walls as kind of like clues like shoot here to freeze that thing um there you go he's gone there's another one but I think that pig cop came through and there's the blue key it's a blue Then that takes us back to the start of the level. Oh, can we? Yeah. Bouncy, bouncy. So back to the intersection. Through the blue door this time. 
Oh, oh. Sorry about that, scratching my nose. Right, so. In this bit, we've got to be very careful because we've got drones behind the glass. And what the drones do is that they're basically like little suicide bombers. They'll just fly up to you and explode. So if that glass breaks, then the drones are free to fly into me and blow up. But as long as that glass is up, then I'm safe from them. But it's a problem because I can shoot that glass through, but also those pig cops can shoot the glass through as well. Right, okay, let's let's use the RPG then. Come on, die. God. One more. Oh. Oh, they're so dangerous, those things. Right, so, plenty of chain gun ammo. Oh, oh. Okay. So, that's what we've got to switch to get through that. It's pretty cheeky, really. Pretty cheeky and annoying putting that switch there. But there you go, I did it. Because that's me, I'm cheeky and annoying. We switched that switch. That's what we came here to do. And we can see a little flashing thing there. Which is actually a, a secret switch. Let's switch that, there it, there it is. Now I believe that opened up something... through here. Yeah, here it is. We get a bit of Devastator ammo. It's Flashy lights for fun. Um, and then... What did that switch do? Oh yeah, it opened up this. Which kind of... Links the blue area back to the start of the map. So anyway. Back to the blue area. Oh, oh, oh. Hi guys! What, what were you up to? We're just having a little bit of a meeting. In some hallway somewhere. Just for the hell of it. Oh yeah! Uh. Oh, big cop. So, like the first level, it, it's a kind of like, go left, press a button, go right kind of scenario. I spent way too long on this switch here. I used to love doing that. I just find some irrelevant detail and just put way too much time into something a little bit pointless. Okay, so now this area's opened up. I hope no ammo for the RPG. Not good. Deadly running out of ammo from a chain gun as well. Only one thing for it. Right then. What's that do? That opens up some more health. Let's take that. And then we switch this. Which I believe... Yeah, that's what it does. It opens up this blue area here. Oh god. Let's just, let's just exit. <laughs> and, oh, it's attacking me. That's fine. Right, so here we are in the last level of the episode. This one was pretty hard, I remember. Um, what's this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose I should have done that more often, actually. I used to put that in as my signature, the name of the level. I just called this one bridge because it was all about that bridge at the start. So we sneak around here. What's going on here? Are they're, they're harboring the blue key. I want that blue key. Give me that blue key. Shoot them through the bars. Oh, oh, maybe it's a waste of time, but whatever. But that door on the left is locked, it doesn't open. Um, so you have to kind of find another way through. You've got to kind of Gordon Freeman it. There's a, uh, a broken pillar on the left there that you can fit through. And as you can see, that pig cop actually walked under the bridge, which uh, was. You know, quite something back in that in that day to make level above level work like that. There it is. So here we go. We can, oh, 
hop through here. Go into the sewers underneath. Oh, they make such horrible noises, those guys. And there's a red door there. Okay, so what are those two buttons here? All oh, right, it's just a cool, cool elevator button on the outside and on the inside. There we are, so we're in here, we've got the key. We break stuff and break that thing. Hey, money and hookers. That's Duke Nukem. Okay. Let's just trash the place and kill everybody. Um, unlock the door. Get out of here. We got the blue key now, let's go. Deep. Boom. Oh, those lizard men are horrible. Every time you see a lizard man, you, you always take a little bit of health. The doom guy, the dead doom guy. <laughs> okay. There's a lizard man. I'm telling you it's gonna hurt me, yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got a little symbol there on the wall, but nothing else really. Hi, Doom Guy. <laughs> Another one of those symbols on the wall, and then only this time we've got a door. Oh. Ah, yes. I used to... So every, every time I put one of those pyramid-type structures down, I'd put some health next to it. Just like a little health point. <laughs> Alright, switch the switch. Um, oh, and we've got some guys coming down. That was no problem. I've got full ammo for the chain gun, that's nice. Okay, so that did something. I opened up that door, but that door doesn't open either. Um, some more shadow turds there. Come to head us off. But they ain't no problem. Just blow up the shadow turds. Give our doom guy a little nod as well as we walk, walk past. Alright, so this has opened up. Another big glass tube. I did enjoy my glass tubes. You know, quite like doing little hamster runs for your characters. Oh, oh my word. This ain't going too well. Some cheeky little secrets there. Okay, so a blue key door, another health point. That doesn't open. You can see here I put some like little stained glass windows in the ceiling as well, just for fun. Right, let's switch that. I think that's how. That's what we came here to do. There's also a little secret switch here. Opens up that. We can get some health. Lovely. Oh, it's another shadow turd. It's a super shadow turd. And a standard shadow turd. Blue, blue key now, <clears throat> so we can go through that blue door. Little flip. And what do we do here? So we come through here. And bam. And we open up the wall there. 
Oh, this bit was horrible. I remember this bit being pretty solid. I'm going to use up all my ammo at this rate. Oof. Oof. I kick you, I smash you. Let's run away! I don't even know if I'm going to make it. Oh, there's a bit of health. <laughs> um, 15 health. Yeah, maybe I can do it with 15 health. What have we got? It's a drone! Run away! Ah, well there we go. He just committed suicide. That was convenient. Okay, so we've opened up this place. Again, some more weird glass floor ceiling type things. God, I could die so easily right now. I don't want to die, I want to show you my level. Oh no! Die! Okay. I needed that. I needed that. Said Mr. Newcomb. That doesn't open. So I press that switch, and and now it is open. Yes, authorized personnel, eh? Let's jump over it. Is it here? That's it, and it authorized personnel. There we go. Oh. I remember spending quite a long time on this room getting the lighting just right and things like that. Try and make these nice lighting illusions. I'm on this room too. Oh, I switched the switch now. My accident. I'm just working on the ceiling details and things like that. I used to quite enjoy. Okay. Let us proceed. That ain't a secret, is it, now? Restricted area. Oh, God. Just jumped on a pig cop's head. Restricted area. Okay. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, it's a drone! Run away! Okay. Just die! Oh, God. Okay. I remember one of the nice things about Duke Nukem was that you could make you could make quite a dark area and whenever you shoot your gun it would light up so it wasn't so much of a problem making things really dark just for atmospheric effect okay so what happens now we come around here and I think we pick up the final key the red key is there health please be health uh, no, there's no health. 
So here we are back at our little hamster run. This is where we were earlier. And uh, there's our red key there. Red key hole. We've got a horrible nasty there around the corner. How did I know he was there? Said nobody ever. Okay, so here we are. And this is uh, the end, if I remember correctly. We teleport here to meet the final boss, who I most certainly am not going to kill, because I've got 33 health. <laughs> um, but hey, what the hell. Um, there's health in the middle there. I may be able to get some. But I, I'm not hopeful that I'm going to take this dude out. But basically, when you kill that big boss man there, it uh, it triggers the end of the level and that's the end of the episode. So whether I kill him or not, it doesn't really matter. I've shown you the whole thing now, so uh, there we go. And I think what I'll do is I'll make a download for this. If you have a look in the description, I'll put all these maps in a zip file. And if you have Duke Nukem 3D yourself, then you can give him a go. And I'm chucking a couple bonus levels as well. Yeah. There we go. Now, I'm getting eaten. My corpse is getting eaten by tentacly aliens. So ends the Ballad of Duke Nukem. So thanks for watching, guys. If you'd like to see any more of my stuff, then please go to lewisfitzjohn.com um, and you can get a link to my Twitter or my Facebook if that's how you prefer to do things. Take care and uh, see you next time.